I heard about the Red Arrow coming up for sale. I most certainly had experience in the restaurant business. I grew up, my parents ran Belmont Hall and a friend of the family, a good friend of the family, Roger Bouchard, had approached me and said, you need to run something, you know, on your own. And I'm like, what? You know, I was 23 years old. When I did a little bit of research on it and found out exactly what the Red Arrow was, it was a, you know, a diner. It was the first time that it had been closed in its lifetime. Of course, we know it's been around since 1922. So I thought, if I guess if, if this can happen, this is like a great thing. This will be really cool. I want my own restaurant, Dad. Are you kidding me? I can't. You can't go have your own restaurant. That little restaurant, 24 hours a day, you're crazy. It took us, it took us, I think it was about three weeks, three to four weeks to um, clean it up a little bit. Um, it was actually in pretty good shape. I think we might have had to get a couple of pieces of equipment for the kitchen, but pretty much it, it was ready to go. And when we opened it, that was really when I was like, whoa, this, you know, this could definitely have some potential. We were only open then. I believe it wasn't even seven days a week. I believe it was even just Monday through Friday. And it was just the first shift. It was the day shift. You know, it was just me really, you know, um, learning how to run my own business. You know, my dad said, and I know my uncle, my great uncle told my dad the same thing when he took over Belmont Hall. You know, you, you, you get the money. At the end of the week, you pay your bills and whatever you have left is yours. Back in its time, the Red Arrow was always known for being open for 24 hours. And, you know, I think then we we extended, you know, to Saturdays. And, and then I, I guess at that point we extended to Sundays. But then my dad over at Belmont Hall, they were always open on Friday night. It was kind of like the fish day. So we did the same thing at the diner on Lowell Street. And it just kind of really organically evolved like that. And next thing you know, we're open 24 hours. Mo Couturier, he was a regular at the diner from the day we opened. Next thing you know, one day I see him doodling. We had only plain mugs at the time. So it was, you know, the diner mug, but they were plain. And they and he had the Mo face. He did it with permanent marker on, on mugs with our names on them. And I was like, I love that face. Like he, he showed it to me. I went, oh my gosh, you know, can we put this on the mug? And he's like, I don't know, can you? You know, and 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 that was really how Mo was born. I got connected with Randy Garbin. He did a magazine and then he had Roadside Online. So it was like blogging and you know all this stuff. And he promoted, you know, the old authentic diners and stuff like that. I mean, he was like my idol at the time. And then I found out that he had visited my diner and I read about it in one of his blogs and you know he said he loved everything about the diner. Food was great, atmosphere was great, everything was great, but he told me that he was not going to return because of the smoke. The smoke was just so, so bad. When I heard that, I, I, it, it really hit my heart. Like I was like, whoa, like, oh my goodness. Statistics are one out of four people smoke. So you, you have that other 75% of people, you're catering to that one person where your, your stool could be turned over. With someone eating your food instead of sitting there smoking and drinking your coffee. So I went, wow, you know, and the more I kept looking up the research myself and, you know, okay, well, I'm doing it. I called a good friend, John Clayton, who worked at the Union Leader at the time. And I said to him, I said, John, I said, uh, I'm doing something kind of big, I guess, at the Red Arrow. And he's like, oh my gosh, what's happening? I said, I'm, I'm going smoke free. And of course he right away too, just like my dad said, are you sure? Like, what do you, you know, and I went over a few things and he, I said, so my deciding day that we're gonna do this is based on when you can put this in print for me in your Monday column. We were plastered on the front page, like it was huge. It, it was huge and I'm like, no way. And that just began, that kind of, um, I didn't know how much I liked marketing at that time. Um, but when that happened, I was like, wow, this is pretty powerful. There were a lot of very upset people, but there were a lot more 
people that were very happy about it because now they said, because what I heard after that was all the time, I can now take my kids in. I didn't used to take my kids in. And so when I heard that, I was like, you know, we're gonna make this kid friendly. You know, we, we incorporated blue plate special, which that's in a lot of diners, but all of our blue plates are served on a blue plate. You know, they're literally a blue plate. And then for the kids, I'm like, oh my gosh, how cool would it be that we serve theirs on a blue Frisbee? We'll flip it over and we're gonna serve it on that. We incorporate and still do it to this day, diner doodle contest. We started doing it in Manchester and the kids color them and we have a contest every week. They get to put them up on the walls at the diner and we have a diner judge in every location and that person picks the winner and the kids put their phone numbers on the back of the paper and the diner judge calls the kids and leaves a message and says, you know, that you won the contest. And it's just really fun. I mean, you know, between that and like the Frisbees, I've had parents tell me, do you have any idea how many Frisbees I have at my house? It's just, you know, it's just fun when I hear stuff like that. Love it, love it. And in September of 98, I went, um, I was voted one of the top 10 diners in the country by USA Today. That was huge. We literally had, and still have customers from all over the world come in 